Your Honor. I've made my case. What I'm doing is winning. That's beyond impressive. Thank you. Given that you smoked all this pot, Mr. Evans, isn't it possible that if Mike Ross commuted one day a week to Harvard Law, that you might not remember that? I'd remember. Yeah, maybe you would, but you'd lie through your teeth about it anyway, wouldn't you? Objection. Mr. Evans, isn't it true that you're a longtime drug dealer and your testimony today is only happening because you signed a deal with Miss Gibbs giving you immunity? Doesn't mean I'm lying. Because you wouldn't lie just to get out of going to prison. No, I would not. Well, how about if the other reason was to get back at someone you've been jealous of your entire life? I've never been jealous of Mike Ross in my entire life. And I just caught you in a lie. Objection, Your Honor. Mr. Evans, my next move is going to be to call Jenny Griffith to the stand. And she's going to testify that you lied to her for years about dealing. And when she found out about it, she left you for Mike Ross. Objection, badgering. She's also going to say that you were jealous of his mind your entire life. And when you found out that she left you for him, you were as jealous as a human being can be. Now, is that true or not? Your Honor. Let me rephrase. Is Miss Griffith going to be perjuring herself, or are you? Yeah, I was jealous of him. And if he lied about all of that, what's to make us believe that he wasn't lying about everything else? You guys heard evidence earlier in the trial that I have a photographic memory. And I do. But the way it works, I don't just take a snapshot of something. See, I read it, and then I understand it. And once I understand it, then I never forget it. But I've been trying to memorize my speech, but I can't. Because it's bullshit. Because I, I am bullshit. You see, the truth is, is that I am guilty of being a fraud. My whole life I have wanted to be a lawyer so that I could help people like Clifford Danner, people who have no one else to fight for them, no one who believes in them. But instead, all I've done as a lawyer is work night and day to put money into the hands of rich people. I was given a gift and I wasted it and I'm ashamed of myself. And, and, and as a final insult, I paraded this mourning woman out in front of you just as a way to get you to admire me. I'm so sorry, Gloria. And all I can say is that I promise you, whether these people find me innocent or not, I am gonna spend the rest of my life fighting for the Clifford Danners of this world. I will not waste that gift again. Mr. Ross, we are prepared to hear your final statement. Before we do, I have one last question. Mr. Ross, you say you're a changed man and you care about the truth, but I wanna know if you're capable of telling the truth. So I'm going to ask you a question, and I suggest that you consider your answer very carefully, because as far as I'm concerned, your answer will determine whether or not you become a lawyer. During your time at Pearson Specter Lit, did anyone there have knowledge of the fact that you were a fraud? Mr. Ross, did anyone else know? I knew. And if you're looking for a scalp, you can have mine. But I was under the impression that this hearing was not about my old firm, but whether or not Mr. Ross should be a lawyer. I say he should. It doesn't matter what you say. He's already had someone testify for him. I'm not here to talk about him. I'm here to talk about someone else. Someone else has nothing to do I'd with I'd like this. to hear this. 15 years ago, a young woman was arrested for illegally obtaining prescription drugs. Turns out she had chronic pain and didn't want to drop out of med school, possibly never to return. So she stole a couple of prescription pads from the hospital where she was interning, a crime with a mandatory sentence of seven years. But instead of throwing the book at her, the prosecuting attorney showed mercy. Had the charges knocked down to a misdemeanor, recommended probation, and sealed the records. That's a touching story, but I don't see what a random attorney has to do with these proceedings. She's not talking about a random attorney. She's talking about me. Just because I showed compassion once doesn't mean he deserves it now. Maybe he doesn't. But that young woman is now an ER doctor. She saves lives. And the world's a better place because you saved hers. Thank you, Miss Pearson. Mr. Ross.
I don't think I can add anything to that. I've made my case. I leave the choice to you. Then this hearing has concluded. We will deliberate and let you know our decision by day's end. Thank you. The plaintiff would like to call Ms. Donna Paulson to the stand. You got her to come in. Just stick to the script. Harvey will know what hit him. I... Ms. Paulson. Did Harvey Specter order you to shred that document? I declined to answer pursuant to my Fifth Amendment rights. Did you put your date stamp on that document? I declined to answer. I'm... I'm not going to ask questions that you're just going to plead the Fifth to, so... Had Harvey Specter asked you to bury something five years ago, would you? He wouldn't ask me to do that. That's not what I asked. If he did, would you do it? Oh, so you're pausing, which means you're hiding something. No, I'm not. See, I think you'd do anything for him, and I know why. Is there a question? Do you love Harvey Specter? What? Do you love him? That has nothing to do with- It has everything to do with. Why'd your last boyfriend break up with you? Ms. Paulson, why'd he end it with you? He thought that I prioritized my work over our relationship. Your work. He asked you to choose between him and Harvey, didn't he? Yes. Who'd you choose? Harvey. Because you love him. Louis, stop. It is not that simple. Do you love him, yes or no? Answer the question. Lewis. You're with him all the time. Your work revolves around him. Your life revolves around him. Objection. Badgering. You don't have a boyfriend, but the one you did wouldn't share you with Your him. Your Honor. Please, I just need a- Do you love Harvey Specter? Uh, Do you love Harvey Specter? That's enough. When the accident occurred, you were on your way to the medallion auction. When and where was this auction to take place? 9 a.m. City Hall. According to the police report, the accident occurred at 8.53 a.m. That means you only had seven minutes to get downtown in rush hour traffic. Objection irrelevant. I believe when I made the same objection, you told his honor it was highly relevant. Overruled. You were running late, only the stakes for you were much higher, weren't they? These things never start on time. Then why was the first medallion sold at 9.03 a.m.? You were scared your chance at a medallion was going up in smoke, and you ran a red. Then you used the accident to paint me and Ray Benghazi as a couple of scapegoats. You can't prove that. What color was the light? I take the fifth. You can't take the fifth, Mr. Santana. This isn't a criminal case. What color was the light? He cut me off. You claim to love our legal system so much. Answer the question, what color was the light? What color was the light? Your Honor? Answer the question, Mr. Santana. It just meant so much to me. Your Honor, can I sidebar with opposing counsel? We can roll the dice with the jury, but I'd rather settle. How much do I have to pay? Nothing. You take responsibility for the accident, and your insurance company makes Ray whole. In return, I waive my right to collect legal fees. I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. I've got a reputation to maintain. That goes for you too, Judge. Why didn't you just jump right in there? I get it. You read a book that says you don't let the jury sit with things. The only problem is... We're not inside of a book. I don't want to seem defensive. Harvey, we still have a ton of shit to hit him with. Were you in there? They're buying what he's saying. Then we make them buy something else. We got a pair of aces. If the jury believes that Cameron's got three of a kind, we're not going to win. We can't go after Stephen. Cameron won't go after Ava if I can convince him it was Stephen. You went to Cameron? Yes. 
and you're going to trust him. I'm not sure we have another choice. You're thinking what I think you're thinking. Don't. I'm thinking I'd like to rip your face off. You get Mariga to point the finger at me, I will point it straight at Ava. Steven, Jessica doesn't respond well to threats. Oh, I don't make threats. I give warnings. You've been warned. Ms. Paulson, please take the stand. Ms. Paulson, could you please state your employment history prior to becoming a legal secretary? I was an actress. Were you able to make a living at that? No. I worked as a waitress to supplement my income, but I don't see what that is. How much do you make now, Ms. Paulson? Somewhere in the six figures? Yes. It's quite an improvement on minimum wage plus tips, wouldn't you say? What can I say? I'm very good at what I do. And was shredding a document related to the Coastal Motors case that your firm tried years ago, one of the things that you were good at doing? Oh, shit. What the hell does he know about that? It doesn't matter, he knows. Ms. Paulson, I'll ask you again. Did you destroy evidence on that case? And I'll remind you that you're under oath. Objection. The document he's referring to was fake. It's not illegal to get rid of fraudulent documents. Did she know that when she destroyed it? It doesn't matter. So unless he plans to prosecute the witness for doing her job. I plan to ask the witness questions. I'd like the chance to do that. Your Honor. Mr. Spector, back off. Witness will answer the question. Yes, I shredded the file. That's your boss's request. No. Ms. Paulson, were you fired during the Coastal Motors trial and then rehired one week later? Yes, but... And since then, you've become your firm's chief operating officer. But you're not a lawyer, are you? You don't need to be a lawyer to be a COO. Then do you have an MBA? No, I don't. Of course you don't. All you have is a bachelor's in theater, and you were a part-time waitress, part-time actress when you quit to become a legal secretary, which is what you were until Harvey Specter made you COO overnight. Tell me, do you have any of the qualifications normally required for that position? I have been at the firm longer than anyone. I know how it works. Oh, so do I, by breaking the law and then rewarding the people that do. That's a lie. Well, then how did you get your promotion? Because there's only two ways I can think of when you're not qualified, and they're both pretty distasteful. Objection, that's inflammatory. Answer the question. I'll tell you how I got it. I asked for it. You asked for it well. You know, if that's all it takes, maybe I should ask Mr. Spector for a pony. Except I don't think that's all it takes. I think it takes destroying evidence, getting fake fired, and a little acting ability to pull it off. Your Honor, he's testifying. Yeah, well then I'll wrap it up. Because if she was willing to destroy evidence in that case, she's willing to do it in this one. And that is why the memo referred to in that article no longer exists. Your Honor, I've heard enough. This case is moving forward. And I'm allowing that article to be admitted as evidence. Let's talk about you, Mr. Spector. In two years, you handled 18,362 cases, 36 cases a day. That's beyond impressive. Thank you. You took 147 to trial, winning them all. Don't go to trial if you're not going to win. Why'd you leave? An attorney by the name of Jessica Pearson helped me get through law school, and she felt that I could use trial experience. But I always planned on ending up at her firm and paying her back by earning that firm outrageous settlements. How am I doing? I could do better. You two think that this is a joke? Argumentative. You're damn right it's argumentative. Because he knows that laws have been broken and he has an obligation to report it. Ms. Leeds. But if this is the way you want to play it, the Attorney General has given me a broad mandate to uncover what went on. And it need not be limited to Mr. Dennis. Were you part of the problem, Mr. Spector? Vague. I'll rephrase. In your capacity as assistant district attorney in the county of New York, did you knowingly suppress evidence in violation of the ABA rules of conduct, the NDAA standards, and the New York State Bar Rule 8.4, Section C? My client would like to exercise his Fifth Amendment rights at this time. Now, is the prosecution ready to call their first witness? The prosecution's first witness is this affidavit from every single member of the defendant's supposed graduating class. Objection, Your Honor. I haven't seen that. Well, then let me read it to you. We collectively come forward to swear the following regarding Michael James Ross. We never saw him. We never knew him. We never heard of him. And it makes us sick that he's taking the good name of Harvard Law School and throwing it down the toilet. Please find him guilty on all counts. Your Honor, I move to strike that document right now. On what grounds? On the grounds that it's completely fabricated. Where's your proof? Besides the fact that I actually went to Harvard, there's no way you could have contacted all of those people since last night. Then I suggest you call every one of these people and put them on the stand. But when you do, every single one of them is going to look you in the eye and say, who the hell are you? What? No snappy comeback? You can try to trick these people all you want, 
But the fact is, you didn't go to Harvard, and this proves it. Objection, he's testifying. What I'm doing is winning. All right, that's enough. I think this is a good time to take a break. See the mind, I won't stay.